Hello and welcome to another video as we jump into a review for the new John Wick Chapter 4 which just hit theaters recently. I had a chance to check it out this past weekend, have quite a bit to say about it, so let's get ready to jump into our review. Welcome once again, my name is Austin and on this channel I talk about one of my favorite things in the world, movies, and how I tie together my faith with film and everything that's in between. The John Wick franchise is one that I have really liked to loved for pretty much its complete run now. This chapter four was one that I was highly anticipating after the cliffhanger of chapter three Parabellum, and this was also my first theatrical experience of the year just because my schedule has been so busy, I finally had a chance to get into the theaters. It felt great, and it was so awesome for it to be with John Wick Chapter 4. Join me in the comments down below with your thoughts and review on the movie, and share your favorite action sequence from the film. Let's kick off this review with the performances. The Bobby Yeager himself, Keanu Reeves, returns as the titular John Wick, and it was so great to see him back in the role. And I feel like in this one, they really brought back the depth and more emotion that we had in the original John Wick movie, which up until now, I've kind of liked the John Wick movies or ranked them, I should say, in sequential order of one being my favorite, then two, then three. So this one really brought us back to the heavy emotional state of the first one, I thought, and it was much more compelling, uh, especially with John Wick's character and his journey throughout this film, uh, as well as some other characters that I'll get into as well as we talk about more of the performances. But Keanu Reeves continues to just be thoroughly impressive in his commitment to the role, the stunt work, the choreography, all of it. He is just so committed and he really shows in the talent that he has on screen especially in this one where they just turn everything up to 11. Ian McShane, Lawrence Fishburne, and Lance Reddick, the late great Lance Reddick unfortunately, all return and are also just as good as they have been previously in entries of this series uh, but we also have some new characters as well, many new characters actually in this film. Hiroyuki Sanada plays Shimatsu, the Osaka Continental Manager and I thought he did a really good job I love I love his work in other films, but it was so great to see him brought into the John Wick franchise. He has a really cool balance of this kind of gentle side of him, but also a formidable side with his talent of, you know, being kind of a samurai-esque in the nature of his fighting style. It was really cool to see that balance that Hiroyuki often brings to his characters, but especially this one in John Wick 4 uh, with the compelling story of him and his daughter, which I'll get to as well. I thought that was really cool. As an actor with such a great reputation for uh, some fantastic films that he's in, it was so great to see him well utilized in this movie and added onto this franchise. Then we have his daughter Akira, who is played by Rina Sawayama. And she's not anyone that I was familiar with. Turns out she's actually a musician and does a couple, at least one of the songs uh, for the movie. So I really have enjoyed listening to her songs when I've gone back and listened to the soundtrack. But she also has some great action sequences with John Wick. It's really cool because you get the gun fu stuff with John Wick and then you get more of the samurai type stuff with her character. It all meshes really well for some really creative and exciting action sequences that take place pretty early on in the film. So it really sets the pace and sets the tone really well as far as what the action is going to be going forwards. And her character is really well portrayed in how that uh, integrates into the story and the rest of the journey throughout the film. We then have Shamir Anderson as Tracker, and he shook things up. I really liked the addition of his character. He's got the fun dog, you know, that we gotta have some kind of cool killer dog in all the John Wick movies. And then he really added a new dynamic, too. He kind of, like I said, shook up the whole structure of the Continental, the Assassins, the High Table, all that kind of stuff as someone who's not really in that realm or maybe was at one point, but still kind of has some kind of connection to it. And it's really interesting to see how he gets in and disrupts all of that kind of stuff. It really makes for some exciting action sequences that add new stakes and new uh, creative options as far as his dog companion attacks kind of thing and his choice of weapons and, and his style of approaching fighting sequences 
sequences. I really, really liked his character. Came away really excited to see his potential future in the franchise as well. We then have the incredible Scott Atkins who comes in as the killer who plays this big old gangster. He wears a fat suit in the movie and he just fully commits to and does such a cool job with this character. He's not in the movie for a ton of time, but for the time that he is in it, he captures the screen. His presence is really felt and his his just his delivery of dialogue as well as the utilization of the fat suit and how he's still able to be formidable in his action sequences and utilize what they did for the character design to make the sequence more creative and more inventive. And we're still not done in adding new characters because we also had Bill Skarsgård come in as the villain Marquis, who's kind of the representative of this high table that John Wick has chosen to take down. He's a compelling villain. He's one dimensional, but he's also very effective. He's very ruthless and brutal in his methodology and his way of just pushing through to get what he wants to taken care of and done. And then finally, Donnie Yen, the man, the myth, the legend as Kane. His character in this movie is so versatile and easy to empathize with. And despite him kind of being antagonistic with John Wick, you can sense and really get an appreciation for the history that the two characters have together and their previous friendship, the respect that they have for one another. It's something they kind of tapped into in the third movie. I forget the character name uh, but the one guy that he kind of is going back and forth with throughout but I thought it was done to a better extent in chapter four here probably partially just because Donnie Yen is so fantastic as an actor and a stunt performer with his action sequences he's so great even utilizing the uh, the handicap of him being blind for this movie you would never know it watching but you would you never forget the fact either. So it's really well done, really good story for his character, as well as the action sequences and all the different things he does throughout this movie. Donnie Yen is an incredible addition to this film and one that I would hope we can see return to the franchise. Next, jumping into the filmmaking aspects. I was repeatedly mind blown throughout this movie. Starting off with the cinematography because I did not expect the cinematography to be on this level for the movie. Not only does it capture in beautiful ways the scenery and the set pieces, whether it's the buildings or the different streets and all the different set locations that they go to, it's incredibly captured and it looks fantastic. You feel like you're watching a very artistic movie where many action movies focus on the action alone and that's the main kind of driving force, but this movie doesn't forget to just make it all look good and capture it so beautifully. And besides that, the action is so creatively done and the camera is a part of it. It's almost a character in itself in the way that it follows the movement, the beat for beat uh, different moments of the fight sequences. It's all enhanced through very creative camera movement. I won't spoil any of it because it's amazing to see when you check it out in the movie through the experience of the film as a whole, but it does some really creative, really inventive things that I don't know if I've seen on screen before. So it was awesome to see that in the film. There's not much more I can say about the stunt work for this movie that's probably already been said, but the stunt and fight sequences in this movie are second to none amongst what the United States cinema is capable of doing. I mean, there's always going to be some really amazing work that's probably better than a lot of the stuff that the U.S. does, but John Wick is probably second to none, at least when it comes to the action sequences. There's definitely some other franchises out there that would give them a run for their money as far as stunt work goes, like Mission Impossible, but still... The action is just absolutely mind-blowing for this film. I would say it's comparable to the latest Mission Impossible Fallout movie in terms of its epic scale and meticulous detail. It's always escalating the action where every sequence subsequently tops the last one. I also thought the pacing and overall length were really solid. 
No sequence ever dragged on for me. There were high points of exhilarating action, but there's also the necessary character moments and character development scenes that you need to continue to keep the compelling nature of the film alive too. The movie utilizes every scene and moment within each scene to really justify the length of a nearly three hour runtime. Next, discussing the themes and scripture. At its core, this movie is about friendships, brotherhood, and parenthood, which I really liked those themes that the movie chooses to focus on, as well as the choices we make, the rules we follow and or break, and the consequences, good or bad, that come from those. John Wick and Shimatsu's relationship that's introduced in the beginning of the film, I really liked and loved that dynamic and the way that it explored the theme, and then continuing through the rest of the film all the way into the climax, I really liked John Wick and Kane's relationship and the way that that was explored and revisited throughout the film as well. Proverbs 18.24, a very familiar verse for many, is one that came to mind. Uh, when thinking about the themes of this movie that says there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother some other miscellaneous things that I wanted to mention I will be talking about some spoilers really quick after I give my rating giving the people who haven't seen the movie yet a chance to fully engage uh, with my review but I will discuss some quick spoilers and my thoughts on them specifically about the end of the movie right after I give my rating but like I said some other quick things to mention I really liked the soundtrack I thought it differentiated itself from the first three movies I do really like like the soundtracks in the first three movies, but they're kind of samey and very similar in tone and vibe. I thought this one takes things a little bit further and differentiates itself a little more. I also loved the costume design, Marquis in particular, the detail and immaculate look of his suits really adds a lot of depth and more to the persona of his character. And if you listen to some behind the scenes interviews with Chad Stahelski talking about the work that went into the uh, costume design, it's really interesting stuff too. And then uh, continuing with the costumes, also with the costume and makeup work that was done on Killa that I mentioned for uh, Scott Atkins character, amazing work. I thought that was really great. And not only did they design a really interesting character, but they made it so he was also capable of doing really cool, fun action sequences. Too. So that's, I'm sure, a huge challenge they had to overcome, and it really paid off. Now, jumping into my rating for the movie, I would give this one a 9 out of 10. I think it's arguably the best movie in the franchise. I still need to go back and rewatch 1 through 3 one more time before I would uh, put a stamp of approval on that uh, kind of ranking. So I might still like the first one best. Uh, but both the first one and this one have amazing character depth and emotional depth to them that I really liked so it really puts them neck and neck for me but the stunt work being second to none this is easily probably one of the greatest action movies ever made which is amazing coming from the fourth film in a franchise and it's a movie you should definitely check out in the theaters if you can all right for those of you who want to get into a little bit of spoiler talk if you do want to continue that in the comments give a quick spoiler warning but I do want to talk about the final sequence of the movie as well as the post credit scene which hopefully you stuck around to see that as well so the big question after the ending of the movie is, is John Wick dead? I could definitely see them going either way with this. I think he is, and I think that would be really a perfect ending for his character. Um, I think it's a really good way to wrap up his character's story. He got to have that redemption that he finally needed. He got to take out the high table, beat them at their own game. I think thematically and structurally, it's a perfect ending for his character. But at the same time, I mean, it's Keanu Reeves' as John Wick. I'd love to see him return. So if not, I'm happy to see him return and continue his journey, but it will kind of take away from the impactful ending that we got in this movie. And then if you stuck around for the post post credit scene Kane and Akira are going to have some kind of showdown. She's sneaking up on him to kill him for revenge for killing her father. And this one is another similar one that I would love to see him survive and continue in the franchise. But in talking to a friend about it, we kind of came to the same conclusion. So if he is killed, which I think makes sense thematically because he was discussing uh, those that cling to life end up dying and those who cling to death end up living. That theme and line really kind of indicates to his character's death. So if he does die, but they do bring John Wick back, for example, it'd be really cool to see him go after Akira for killing his friend as well. And that'd make for a really interesting dynamic of him also caring about her father. So lots of different directions that they could go. Those are just my quick thoughts on some of the spoilers and the ways that they wrapped up this movie. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit of a longer review, but this was a long movie. There's a lot to go 
go over. And so I wanted to share my in-depth thoughts on it, as well as getting into some of the spoiler talk too. So thank you for checking out this video. Don't forget to share in the comments down below your review and thoughts on it, as well as your favorite action sequence from the film. And I will see you in the next video.